Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Morning Dew Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on November 12th, 2021. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet. Welcome to the Daily Dew. Long awaited. It's been almost three days since I uploaded, but we are here checking out space weather, world weather, earthquakes, and volcanoes. Looking at the last 48 hours, 304 angstroms of our sun. And we're missing a little bit of imagery here. We're actually missing pretty much from midnight earlier today and on. So we're looking at the last 48 hours up until midnight earlier today. Looking at incoming imagery here. No major space weather to talk about heading our way. Nor being affected at the moment. Looking at a pretty quiet sun. Nonetheless... And we have two sunspots that are facing us at the moment and as well a coronal hole. A little backside action there. You can see it on the left side coming from that same sunspot and ejected right at Mercury. Looking at the multi-spectrum here at all the events and the two sunspot regions which we'll be watching here over the next couple days as they are in Earth-facing position. And as well, watching cresting activity. Looking at 193 angstroms here, this is where we can see the coronal hole, and that's the dark region in the southern part of the sun. And that is in a north facing position. And when we have an earth facing coronal hole, we can expect our solar winds to increase over the next 36 hours. 171 angstroms here, just able to see everything thanks to Solar Dynamics Observatory. Let's have a quick look here at our real-time solar wind. Solar winds are hammering us at 335 kilometers per second, being up to about 400 kilometers per second earlier today. Now, this is just slightly above average. Our average is about 250 to 300. Looking at the solar X-ray flux, we did just recently see almost a C-class range flare. Geomagnetic activity remains low as well. KP index is low. Looking at the ISWA spiral, you can see the backside action shot out right at that orange dot, which is Mercury. And we are expecting on the 14th some coronal hole wind stream. Schumann resonance for today, a power of 11, power 48. Now, I haven't seen a chart like this before. This is a little bit strange when it tells me the A2. Nonetheless, amplitude power of 11, quality of 20, power of 48. Looking at earthquakes around the world the last 24 hours, we're going to start out in a very active Idaho today. As it started off with a 3.4 this morning, and they did see a sizable 4.0 as well in Stanley, Idaho. Seen about six earthquakes in the region, and that is the Salmon Mountain Range. 3.5 there off the coast of Oregon as well reported today. Juan de Fuca Plate, 27 kilometer depth. 3.3 there, Cobb at the geysers, and as well a 4.3 here, La Libertad, Mexico, Gulf of California. Minor earthquakes there through New Mexico and Oklahoma with a 2.8. No major swarms to talk about. Looking at 262 earthquakes across the USGS map. Last 24 hours. Rare earthquake here in Leesport, Pennsylvania. And as well, Howardville, Missouri. Seeing some minor activity across the Madrid. And as well, give you a quick update here. Looking at Yellowstone. No major earthquake movement through the area. Silvergate, Mammoth. 1.7 is the largest. Really nothing to report. Stanley, Idaho is the major player today. As well, reporting a minor explosion here at Princeton, Canada. And that looks pretty north of the quarry to be a quarry blast. As well, Earthquakes Canada here showing a 3.3. Port Alice, BC. And as well, another 3.3. 189 kilometers off the coast. So seeing a lot of activity. Juan de Fuca up into the Cascades. Caribbean Plate 
Haiti saw a 4.6 earthquake today at a 7 kilometer depth. And Dominican Republic is seeing a sizable 4.0 at 100 kilometer depth. 4.8 here reported to Peru. South America seems pretty quiet recently. Largest earthquake to report the last 24 hours, Mid-Atlantic Ridge with a 5.7, 10-kilometer depth. South Sandwich Islands seeing some activity as well, 5.2 and a 4.6. Quite across the African plate, but into Europe and Arabia here, 4.6. Albania, 10-kilometer depth. That's the second one this last week. 4.3. Greece, 4.8 in Turkey. And a 4.6 Iran. So active day all across the world. Every continent kind of seeing a little something. Except for Africa. 4.3 Myanmar. 4.7 China. Lots of activity here as well through Indonesia. 5.0 at a 90 kilometer depth. Followed by two 4.7s. That's right around the Sinabang. And, and in that one there. Indonesia 4.7 right around Krakatoa. Our two deepest earthquakes to report today, 4.2 south of Fiji, 508 kilometer depth. Just saw another one here, 4.4 Kermadec, 350, and as well, 505 south of Fiji. So deep activity is coming, and we can always expect a larger shallower earthquake to follow. So heads up, stay aware and prepared, especially the lack of activity through Japan. Following the 6.6 .6 earlier, we should still see some more aftershocks through the region. Having a look here, the last seven days across the world, and again, largest to report the last seven days is the 6.6 .6 in Japan. But across the North American plate, seeing constant activity, quiet through the Aleutian Islands and into Japan, 6.6 .6 largest this week, but still pretty quiet considering and as well, Europe is quiet. Lots of activity the last couple of days. Atlantic Plate, right in mid to Iceland there, a 5.1 reported just two days ago in Iceland. And then our 5.7 here, Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Definitely things are picking up. Looking at 270 earthquakes the last 24 hours, according to USGS. We'll have a look here at the Pacific Disaster Center, showing the most recent volcanoes getting updated. Swiss and Najima in Japan, Nevadas de Ruiz, Sabancaya in Peru, Senge in Ecuador, Reventador in Ecuador, Semens Napochinoy, La Palma, Fuego, Karamiski in Russia, Popo in Mexico, Nevadas de Chilean in Colombia. And that's about 10 volcanoes getting updated today. We still have an active and erupting 48. Stay tuned for the volcanic activity report. I'm still working on it. It will be coming up soon. I'll give you a full update on all of the active and erupting volcanoes around the world. No tropical storms to talk about, but we do have storms talking. We are talking about some storms in Australia and across Indonesia. Snowstorm through northeastern United States up into Minnesota and Wisconsin. And as well, northern Ontario, lake effect snow coming off of Superior. And as well, a pretty big system is coming through. Just looking at satellite imagery here the last two days as that big system has come through. And we'll have a look at my radar. This is the last two hours of imagery. This was yesterday before the first wave of moisture came through last night. And we still had a pretty nice day it was, as it was just a line moisture coming out. But this was a very strong system, possibly a once-in-a-hundred-year storm. Looking at Windy.com, they were reporting 62-kilometer sustained winds over Lake Superior. And it was a hundred years ago, two days ago, where the Edmund Fitzgerald had sunk. So we're looking at a hundred-year storm moving eastward and is going to bring a whole world of cold temperatures behind it. And then watch for another low to head out of Alberta this week. Going to bring those temps even further down. So definitely enjoy this last little bit. Because this is it. We've got some really cold temperatures moving in. 
heading from the northwest, Alaska. This week over Ontario, looking at just about minus two later in the week. Stay tuned for the forecast coming up quickly. Just wanted to show you here the next seven days wind maps. Big system again heading over Canada and the United States and some pretty vigorous systems moving through the Pacific right now. So let's show the five-day forecast brought to you by Media Worth and Daily Events Worldwide. We're going to start out here, home base right now, Brantford, Ontario, as pretty much today was the last nice day to play some disc golf out there. Cold temps and rain moving in tomorrow. And then the day after, right into Sunday, we will see some snow. Mixed precipitation across most of southwestern Ontario. But once the system goes through, we will have some cold temperatures heading in behind that. Watch for that Alberta clipper to come racing into Ontario later in the week. And then head towards the Atlantic Canada. And then another big system heading eastward out of BC and Alberta. Looking at the next few days here through Alberta, above freezing and then right down to minus 13. Without the wind chill, we're going to have some pretty strong winds associated behind this big Alberta low. But you'll probably get about 10 to 15, if not 20 centimeters of snow through southern Alberta. And then that big system is going to move eastward. So big blizzard on your hands for Canada. Three provinces right now, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and watch for lots of snow, heavy snowfall through higher elevations, BC. And cold temperatures, of course. This is, uh, we're not in winter yet, but we do expect some pretty cold temperatures to come. Overlooking the Atlantic here, big system forming Upper level low, heading back southward into the middle of the Atlantic, while subtropical storm Wanda heads into Iceland and Greenland, and this will be a big blizzard event. Those tight, tight isobars really close together. That means really strong winds, so blizzard-like conditions coming up for most of Greenland, and Iceland will be rain and then snow. Overlooking Europe, Low pressure system over the Mediterranean still trapped in there. Big high pressure ridge north of it. Colder temperatures moving in through northeastern parts of Europe. And as well some snow. A big system heading through. Lots of moisture heading into the border with Russia. Overlooking China and Russia. Cold temperatures will be dropping yet again. Looking at about minus 36 in some places. Parts of Siberia. But those cold temps are falling all the way down to Mongolia, Nepal Valley. Overlooking Southeast Asia weather and India. you got a couple systems affecting you, India, this week. So definitely not going to see these monsoon rains stop anytime soon. Sri Lanka storms and as well southern India. Daily evaporation rains across most of Malaysia, Indonesia and the Philippines big system here developing in the long range keep an eye out for that with the next forecast and rain and extreme weather heading out of australia big high pressure ridge rolling in it's going to dry things out overlooking the pacific looks like hawaii's got a system heading towards you out of the equator could be a warm wet weekend overlooking south america Daily evaporation rains, but then watch this system move in through Argentina and Brazil, up into Paraguay, Bolivia. Watch for heavy rains and possible damaging hail. Africa, a lot of daily evaporation rains, a little bit southern than normal. But nothing major to report through Africa going to leave you here looking at the southern hemisphere versus the northern pointing out cold temperatures and as well our major systems that are affecting our hemispheres this week watch for the big blizzard and winter storm that is heading into greenland that will be the big story maker this week as well canada seeing a big winter storm thanks for watching today this has been mike with morning dew stay aware prepared 
stay young and have fun, and get your morning due. Prayers for humanity. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.